In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing came into being. And Him was life, and this life was the light of men. And this light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. What a beautiful and a powerful scripture describing the Word of God, the Logos, Jesus Christ. See this Word, this life, this light of the world is the light that shines in the darkness. And that darkness, that evil can never, never overcome it. You see this Word, this life, this light, He has come to us. He's come to us through the incarnation of Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast of the Epiphany of the Lord. The term Epiphany means manifestation or revelation. The Epiphany of the Lord is where Christ was first made known to the Gentile world, that is, the non-Jewish world. Webster also defines the Epiphany as a sudden manifestation, a perception, an intuitive grasp of reality, an illumination, a discovery, a realization of some truth that has been previously hidden. Most of us, when we think about it, can say at some point of our lives, we've maybe had an epiphany about something or some situation going on in our life. That aha moment, when that light bulb goes off and the light comes on and we're able to see things more clearly, we receive that clear understanding of a situation. You see, the Magi, they had their own epiphany as well. They came from the east to Jerusalem and inquired, where is this newborn king? We saw his star at its rising and we've come. We've come to do him homage. They come to worship him. You see, the Magi, they saw the light, that new star, and they came to believe that that was a sign of the long-awaited Messiah king, the one that would rise up to the Jewish nation. This king was the promised Messiah, and he was the one that would free the children of Israel from their oppression, and he would reestablish that Davidic kingdom with all its glory and its power. So just are, who are these magi? The magi are sometimes referred to as wise men or the three kings. But actually they were Gentiles. They were non-Jews. They were probably astrologers from Persia. But their religious beliefs were more closely related to the Jewish faith as compared to other religions of that day and that time. You see, they believed in one God. They did not worship idols. And they thought that that light, the light was the best reflection or a symbol for deity, for their God. Some even say that that trip from Persia, from where they were to Bethlehem, could have taken over 800 miles and up to four or five months. It was a grueling trip. And you notice also in the scriptures, it doesn't mention a number of wise men. It only mentions three gifts. It doesn't even give any names of the men. But tradition does name them of Balsar, Malachar and Gaspar. According to that same tradition, one was elderly, one was in the prime of life, and one was a young man. Today in our second reading, we hear from St. Paul that the Gentiles are co-heirs and members of the same body and co-partners in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. You see, in this epiphany, St. Paul declares that Gentiles, that's us, that's all of us, we're co-heirs and members of the body of Christ. And all that come to faith in Christ can receive those promises of the gospel. Within the context of the gospel, we can see that Jesus, he manifested himself as Savior of the entire world, both Gentiles and Jews. He is the king of all creation. He is the king of heaven and on earth. The Magi were instructed by King Herod, go and search diligently for this child. Now, there's a huge difference in the motivation of those who are searching for this child. King Herod, he was Herod the Great. He was installed or put into power by the Roman Senate as king of the Jews. But the Jewish people, the Jewish nation, they didn't, they distrusted him. He was not one of their own. He had no right in their opinion to the ruling power that he was given. And Herod had his own agenda. He was motivated by greed and by hate. He wanted to seek out that newborn king in order to destroy him, to destroy any threat to his power, any threat to his kingship. Now, on the other hand, the Magi, they were motivated to seek out the light of that new star, which was for them that sign of the God creator of the universe. 
The Magi represented the Gentile nations of all of the world. And they were in hopes that this new light would lead them to that promised Messiah King that would come for the Jewish nature, nation. So who the Magi were is not as important as who the Magi was seeking. The Magi were seekers of truth. They were seekers of the divine. The scripture says, Behold, the star that had been seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They prostrated themselves. They did him homage. In other words, they worshipped him. And then they opened up their treasures and they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You see, gold symbolizes Christ, king of the universe, his kingship. And frankincense, well, that symbolized Christ's divinity, his priesthood. Frankincense was incense. And throughout the ancient world of that time, that incense was burned in the temples to pay homage to the gods. And even in the Jerusalem temple that worshiped Yahweh, they say great clouds of frankincense and incense billowed during the Jerusalem temple worship. And the myrrh, well, it symbols Christ's humanity. You see, myrrh was a pungent perfume. It was used to anoint, embalm the bodies of the dead. The myrrh presented to the Christ child was symbolic of his humanity, and it also points to his sacrificial death. The gifts presented to the newborn king, it can remind us of some very important spiritual truths, that Jesus is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. He is the King of the universe, the King of all creation, the King of heaven and the King of earth, what is seen and unseen. Jesus is fully divine. He is God. And through the incarnation, he became fully human. And in his humanness, he suffered. He died and was buried for our sins. <clears throat> so what was the real motivation for them seeking out this newborn king? Or maybe the question is, what were they looking for? And what did they find? It says that they prostrated themselves and they did him homage. You see, the Magi, they received their epiphany. They found this newborn king. And through faith, they worshipped him. Just like St. Paul, when he experienced his epiphany. We remember when the Lord had manifested himself to Paul. They knocked him, they knocked him down and blinded him. You see, St. Paul, spiritual eyes were open. He received that epiphany. An epiphany of a new reality. The reality that Jesus Christ was present, alive among us. Well, the Magi spiritualized. They were opened as well. And upon finding this newborn king, they realized that they were in the presence of the divine. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, at the beginning of this new year, we should take some time to reflect on our spiritual life, looking at the past in order to know where we need to go into the future. We might ask ourselves, is my faith alive, a vibrant faith? Possibly has it over time become lukewarm, maybe a stagnant or stale? Am I willing to remain there in that status quo with really no desire to change, to grow? Am I willing to change my own beliefs and actions in order that they would reflect better the teachings and the commandments, the teachings of Jesus and the commandments of his children? We may ask, am I diligently seeking out, like the Magi, a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ? Are we intentional disciples? Intentional about what we believe and why we believe? Intentional about living out that faith and then sharing that faith with others? Will this new year come and go or will it bring a deeper spirituality into our lives? The scripture says that the Magi, they return to their own country by a different way. Perhaps that different way is not only the road that skirted on the outskirts of Jerusalem to avoid Herod as they travel back home. No, I think perhaps that different way is something deeper. That different way can be a different way of life, a different way that we believe, a different way that we practice our faith. After their epiphany with the Christ, they can never be the same. They were spiritually changed and renewed. They cannot go back to their old ways their old positions of power and influence, wealth and luxury. They couldn't look to the cosmos, to the stars 
for answers any longer. You see, the Magi, they found, they gazed upon, they worshipped this newborn king. They stood in the presence of the creator of the universe, Jesus Christ. The gifts that they gave could not compare to the gifts that they themselves received. When they go and search, when we go and search diligently for that light, the light of the world, Jesus, and offer him the gift of our life, our love, our worship, our praise, and our adoration. When we encounter Jesus and we respond by growing in relationship with him, we're like the Magi. We have chosen to go that different way. When we follow the way of Christ, we too will be changed forever. May Almighty God bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen.